The talk of today represents the fourth event uh, of uh, Horizonte Europa Storia, Memoria, Pensiero, a project by ERT in collaboration with Europe Direct Modena to celebrate the Europe Day that this year has been marked by the anniversary of the Schumann Declaration, which is considered the first institutional step of what has become the EU today. The aim uh, is to discuss how these European horizons are growing and developing in the contemporary theatre through the pers perspective of five international guests, all of them linked to the project Between Lands, a European cooperation network that connects, uh, besides CERT, Quevers Bruxelles from Belgium, La Comédie de Reims, France, Teatro Calderon, Valladolid, Spain, Teatro Nacional Chao Joao, Porto, Portugal, and the Nassus Foundation, Greece. The project is focused on the democracy and the play writing and supports uh, a group of young international artists uh, whose last meeting uh, took place at VF Festival in Modena just before the lockdown. We are here with Nuno Cardoso, Teatro Nacional São João, Porto, Portugal. Michael de Koch, Quevers, Bruxelles, Belgium. Angolar, La Comédie de Rennes, France. Claudio Longhi, Emilia Romagna, Teatro Fondazione, Modena, Bologna, Italy. An Carme Portacelli, Teatro Calderon, Valladolid, Spain. Let's start with the first question, that is, uh, how the development of your work in theatre has been shaped by the idea of a European horizon in the broad sense of a social, cultural, artistic entity that embraces centuries of shared history and specific stories, even transcending the political administrative spaces of the times and the perspectives which currently define the EU actions. And uh, I will give the floor to Nuno Cardoso, Teatro Nacional São João, Porto, from Portugal. Hello, thank you for inviting me. Well, to answer your question, um, there's a 19th century writer from Portugal called Esed Queiroz that uh, essentially describes Portuguese as people that are waiting from the train from Paris and when the train comes, uh, civilization comes up short uh, in our sleeves. So this condition of Portugal um, has been connected with our geographic um, situation in Europe, we're at the end or at the beginning of Europe, so we're a little bit distant from the main stream of Europe. And also, um, we are facing the ocean, so we have uh, like 200 million people that speak Portuguese and none of them live in Europe. There's Brazil, there's Africa, there's lots of countries that speak Portuguese that have a shared heritage with us. And so Portugal has always been straddled between uh, this ambition to run towards Europe and also this disposition to run towards the ocean. And, and that is an issue for us at the National Theatre because uh, the National Theatre, the way that the political and cultural structure of Portugal is now is extremely influenced by Europe and by our gathering, uh, our inclusion in the EU. And most of uh, the way that the Ministry of Culture developed, the way the theatres developed, is connected to a reconnection with Europe. Um, so most of our work is done with Europe in the horizon. We are part also of UTE, we have other connections with other theatres, and we try to develop 
uh, an idea, a platform in which uh, we can work at this thing of being European and at this uh, someone told once that Europe was a slaughterhouse of civilizations and for the last 80 years for the last 70 years we're trying to become a flower house of civilizations so discussing our differences our uh, similitudes is a big part of of our theater we opened up uh, our season with um, la mort de danton the danton's death uh, as a way to think about what is Europe. We connected with between lands and we tour around Europe as a way to broaden our communication uh, with our partners, with artists, uh, dramaturgists, dramaturgs, actors, choreographers, uh, so that we can weave if, if we can use that word, uh, a sense of being European, especially nowadays, because I think that there's a lot of discourse of nationalism and of xenophobism, and we have huge problems with the redistribution of wealth, huge problems with migration, with... Uh, people working around what the democratic processes is and so we feel strongly that we can that we must engage uh, with our partners in Europe at the same time we feel strongly that we must engage with our language that is spread all around um, the world so this is I'm sorry, kind of cool, because at the same time we're in Abadia talking about uh, violence and about uh, class and about the way we should work in a new methodology with, with people from Europe, citizens alike, and then two days after we're in Africa presenting the same show and we're talking about the same thing in a entirely different perspective and seeing how they see us so um so to finish yes the idea of europe has been quintessential to the construction of what we think should be the national theater and all the theaters connected around portugal um it's been uh, since our revolution it's been 46 years so it's been a hell of a ride to 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 meet again to be european again and to be this thing that's uh, this strange thing between brazil and uh, angola and uh, portugal i hope i answered your question i don't know thank you very much I call on uh, Michael de Kock, Quebec, Brussels, Belgium. Hello. <clears throat> also very happy to be uh, with you. And thank you um, very much for having me, for inviting me. I will go on a little bit um, on what um, Nuno said when he said that Portugal is the, the well, at, um, at the border of Europe facing the ocean and facing Europe, being the end or being the start of Europe. I can say that in a way, uh, Brussels and Belgium, uh, Belgium is uh, a very particular country, as you all might know, because of the different uh, communities living there and different languages being spoken, etc., etc. But Brussels is a little bit the opposite uh, of Portugal. In that way, in that sense, it's really like the center of Europe. Uh, in a way, also officially, because there's a lot of European uh, lobbyists and U European government, gov um, leaders coming there to meet so it's a little bit um really the center in a way um and brussels is a very uh beautiful interesting but also very complex city 
um, because it's uh, one of those majority minority cities, which means that the majority of the city is composed by minorities, 180 nationalities living uh, in Brussels. Uh, if you look at which languages uh, people speak in Brussels, it's really a mix of everything. Um, it's, it, it used to be like two decades, three dec decades ago, it used to be considered as a um, as a bilingual city, uh, being um, French and Dutch. Now French is still the lingua franca, so 80% of the people speak French um, or understand it, speak it, but there's also Dutch, Flemish uh, um, variant. There's also English a lot. There's also Arabic, there's Spanish a lot. So it's really like a very complex and a very um, um, multicultural, I don't like the word anymore, diverse city. Um, but of which we can say that the city is the world. So, especially these days with COVID and all, um, in, in our cities, in Brussels, but also in several other cities, we have the world gathered. Um, so, uh, especially for Brussels, that is the case, which means that we there are lots of lots of theatres really uh, near, close to one another. We have the Théâtre National uh, just next door, we have Kai Theater. Etc. Etc. We have Kunstfestival des Arts. So there's a lot of international um, traveling uh, artists, um, companies coming, uh, dance companies. Dance is very, very um, um, well developed uh, in Belgium, in Brussels. I think one of the reasons is, or that's at least my theory, theory because there's this language is issue. So so many choreographers come to Brussels to 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 be uh, uh, educated, but also to to make their career. So I think that the city is the world. Um, so yes, that city is very important for us. We're a city theater, and the city dramaturgy is where we start from. And if we go, if we look um, on on a on a scale, that world for us, of course, in a, in a, in a first uh, level, is European. Because of many reasons, because Europe, um, because all those European communities, countries are organized in Brussels, but also because it's the countries who lie next to us. Um, of course, we can go further. Also, Nuno was referring to it already because there's a, um, a whole decolonization going on, um, which has to do with African countries, which has to do with South American countries also. But also that is, is a thing that... Um, links or that combines or that we that we share as Europeans it's not the most it's it's a it's a topic on which we work quite a lot in Caves it's it's a it's a difficult one but also there Portugal and Belgium of course we all know share some uh, histories so we have this European history which we share this European res responsibility which we share um, um, towards the world, towards each other. So yes, I think that the theatre without that European conscious today is, is um, well, of course, you can you can make theatre as the divertissement des bourgeois, and you can go to villages and play, and it can be very useful and very interesting. And of course, the local is very important to start from, but I think the European scale is a very important um, way of talking and thinking about theatre today, especially from the, with the theatres which are joined in this Between Lands group, because they're in, in very important cities and because they're with theater makers, authors who have their voice and who, who think about those issues. Um, for us, the teams, uh, gender equality, diversity, minorities are very important. I think um, in, in, in the work we, we, we create at KWS, I think also there, there's a very... Um, uh, a European link in a way that you can link to networks or to other theatres doing a similar work. Um, and that is very interesting. Uh, I think also there I've been a lot in contact, for, uh, for example, the last years with Cadme Portacelli, who's also who created this group in a way and who, um, who is, um, uh, well, we're very um, often in contact. And there you see that, for example, for several rides, um, there's a difference of, of uh, rhythm in how those things develop in Spain and in Belgium. Sometimes Spain is quicker, sometimes Belgium is quicker. But I think on all these levels, exchanging um, is very important for me. And I will conclude with that. The, the reason why I make theater, why I am in theater, is because it's a place of encounter. It's a place to meet people. It's a place not to go uh, to always do the same things with the group you got out of school with, 
in a, in a small company and always with the same four or five people. For me, the reason to make theater, to be in theater, is encounter and meeting people. And on the European scale, uh, on, the Europe on the European level, is, the, is a very relevant level. And not to say the most important, because on, on many other levels, um, and um, the European connection is not strong enough. And I think culture can be very important there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then, Angolar, La Comédie de Reims, France. Bonjour. Uh, Bonjour. Je voudrais vous remercier tout d'abord de, de m'avoir invité, de nous avoir invité, parce que, comme euh, le disait Michael, c'est très important. Pour nous tous, ces échanges internationaux, la confrontation de nos points de vue et de nos situations, y compris de nos situations géographiques. Alors, contrairement à, à Nuno ou à Michael, euh, ou Carmé ou Claudio, euh, euh, le festival euh, Far Away, qui s'appelait Reims Seine d'Europe, est située dans une ville de taille relativement modeste, puisque la ville de Reims fait, fait 200 000 habitants, mais n'a pas d'agglomération. Elle est entourée de champs, de vignes, des vignes de, de champagne. Et jusqu'à une période relativement modeste, cette ville, qui est la plus importante de, de la région, euh, ne n'offrait pas à ses habitants la possibilité d'assister à des spectacles de, de créateurs européens, si bien que euh, les Rémois qui voulaient euh, découvrir euh, les grands événements de la création européenne, pour les plus chanceux, euh, allaient euh, jusqu'à Paris pour assister à ces spectacles. Or, on peut se demander qui peut euh, faire quatre heures de route euh, pour aller voir un spectacle à Paris qui en a euh, le temps, euh, l'argent. En tout cas, euh, la création européenne n'était pas du tout euh, partagée euh, avec les Rémois. Alors, à l'origine du, du festival, il y a eu justement la, la volonté des deux directeurs du Centre Dramatique National, Emmanuel de Marcimota puis Ludovic Lagarde, euh, d'offrir aux Rémois la possibilité d'assister aux créations des grands noms euh, de la création européenne, des, des artistes euh, peut-être les plus euh, connus. Et euh, petit à petit, euh, s'est ajoutée l'idée que euh, la rencontre avec... Euh, nouvelle génération de créateurs était, euh, était euh, important. Euh, je voulais juste faire un petit détour pour dire que la France a une longue tradition d'accueil des artistes étrangers. Euh, les artistes venus d'Europe de l'Est en, en particulier ont, ont, ont beaucoup, euh, nous ont beaucoup permis d'ouvrir nos imaginaires dans, dans, dans cette période historique, d'ouvrir nos imaginaires et celle d'une génération entière de, de spectateurs. Euh, oui, que, que, que serait no, notre théâtre sans cantor euh, le, le théâtre qui se fait aujourd'hui euh, doit, doit beaucoup à la rencontre avec les, les grands courants de la création européenne. Euh, voilà, ce serait le théâtre documentaire, sans rime protocole ou, ou le groupe Berlin. Euh, mais euh, à Reims, vraiment, on, on appelle de, de nos lieux une Europe euh, ouverte, ouverte euh, de, parce que euh, le renouveau, en particulier du théâtre politique, euh, doit beaucoup, euh, comme vous venez de le dire, à ces échanges avec d'autres pays du monde, l'Afrique, l'Amérique latine, euh, les pays en guerre. Euh, et voilà, ça, ça me semble une chose importante à dire, c'est que quand on parle d'Europe, euh, je voudrais défendre l'idée qu'il s'agit d'une Europe ouverte. Je voulais juste aussi ajouter quelques mots sur la spécificité de, du festival qui donne aussi une certaine idée de quelle Europe nous sommes attachés à Reims. La, la spécificité du festival, c'est qu'il 
repose sur la collaboration de l'ensemble des scènes de la ville de Reims, qui toute l'année se fédère pour faire en sorte que la ville soit un carrefour de, de la création européenne. Et euh, cette, euh, cette manière de faire a, euh, pour nous, euh, je dirais, nous a appris à développer euh, des, des pratiques, euh, que je dirais, vertueuses, euh, qui sont euh, le débat, le dialogue, euh, mais aussi le partage de l'outil, la mutualisation budgétaire, la coopération pour le développement du public, donc avec sept scènes de la ville de Reims, euh, un théâtre, euh, un, un CDN, une, une scène nationale, une scène de la public, un opéra, euh, un centre de création euh, musicale, une scène, euh, enfin, bon, bref, tout, tout le tissu euh, voilà, artistique de, de la ville. Et euh, avec eux, on a, on a vraiment euh, voilà, développé euh, des idées de, de solidarité qu'on attend aujourd'hui de, de l'Europe. Euh, voilà, je finirai en disant que depuis hier, je me sens un peu moins pessimiste parce que j'ai l'impression que cette idée de solidarité euh, connaît euh, à nouveau quelques frémissements. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Euh, Claudio Longhi, Emilia Romagna, Théâtre Fondazione, Modena Bologna, Italie. Bonjour, euh, merci bien pour euh, cette occasion. Alors, euh, je parle de Bologne, de Modène, de l'Italie, donc euh, d'une autre frontière de l'Europe, euh, c'est-à-dire la frontière sud de l'Europe, en frontière névralgique au point de vue de la relation, par exemple, avec euh, les réfugiés et les migrants, c'est-à-dire euh, avec le peuple qui regarde à, à l'Europe comme à leur euh, espoir au lieu de leur espoir. Et je crois qu'on doit réfléchir sur ça. Euh, je crois qu'il y a deux façons de répondre à la question, c'est-à-dire une façon liée au théâtre et une façon personnelle. Alors, pour ce qui concerne le théâtre que je dirige maintenant, c'est-à-dire euh, Emilia Romagna Teatro Fondazione, c'est un théâtre qui... Euh, a dans sa structure, dans sa nature, la relation avec l'Europe. C'est un théâtre euh, qui a construit son identité euh, sur une euh, relation étroite avec le ville que le théâtre habite, avec le, la région, mais en même temps euh, une relation très forte avec euh, le pays de l'Europe et avec les, les cultures étrangères, euh, je, soit au point de vue des de relations avec les artistes, euh, je mentionne tout simplement euh, la, la fonction énorme qu'il y a eu un artiste tel que Thierry Salmon dans la vie d'Erte, ou euh, au point de vue des relations institutionnelles. Euh, Erte a participé à un grand nombre de projets européens à partir du projet Prospero ou le projet euh, Between Land dans nous parlons ici. Et puis, il y a une façon personnelle de répondre à la question, c'est-à-dire que dans ma formation, la relation avec l'Europe a été essentielle pour la construction de, de mon point de vue sur le théâtre. Je crois que j'ai commencé à réfléchir sur le théâtre en regardant le, le film de 1789 d'Ariane Nouchkine. Et puis, je me rappelle une expérience que j'ai eue quand j'étais adolescent à Paris avec euh, le théâtre de la Huchette, ou encore euh, l'opportunité la, la, euh, de réflexion qui m'a donné la euh, participation à deux festivals du Piccolo Théâtre de Milan euh, dédiés à l'Europe. Euh, je crois, euh, pour conclure cette réflexion, que... Euh, le théâtre soit un lieu de rencontre, comme disait euh, Michael. Euh, je crois que le théâtre, c'est un lieu de communauté. Et je crois qu'il y a une relation très étroite 
entre le théâtre en tant que communauté et l'Europe. Euh, je crois que euh, le théâtre a eu euh, un rôle fondamental dans la construction d'une certaine idée d'Europe. C'est-à-dire que euh, le, le, le tour, à, à partir des tournées des, des comédiens italiennes ou de la fonction qu'il y a eu la tragédie grecque dans la construction euh, d'une sorte d'horizon culturel, euh, le théâtre a eu en, en fonction fondamentale dans la construction de l'Europe. Donc, je crois que maintenant, c'est nécessaire de s'engager sur euh, ce frontière des relations. Merci beaucoup. And, um, finally, I call on Carmen Portacelli, Teatro Calderon, Valladolid, Spain. Hello. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you a lot to be here and to be invited. Uh, to speak about this, which is something that concerns us a lot, really. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you something that you all know, but it is necessary to explain for the audience, because maybe they will understand why I was thinking about Between Lands and why uh, we were being together from the beginning, talking about the defending, of defending culture, for example. You, uh, I was running Teatro Español um, during three years and a half. I, I won a tender to, 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 to be the, the artistic director in this theater. And when there were the elections in, in, um, in the city hall, uh, the, the politic party who was there in this moment, which was Manuela Carmena and all left wings party, Uh, they they lost the election. Well, they won the elections, but uh, extreme right wings and right wings uh, added more, and so they formed government, and then they fired me. Um, this is very important to explain that because uh, this is maybe one of the things that made me to come to new my uh, European colleagues and to move in this in this path to do something together because I think. And I was very worried, and I am still uh, worried, um, because I think that we are in a very difficult moment because there are a lot of populisms, because there are the extreme right wings rising um, everywhere, because we we now with the coronavirus we've been we've been seeing that, for example, all the uh, Amazons and Googles and and uh, Alphabet and and um, Apple and all those things are bringing about changes about what culture is that were coming from before. I think I, I think it it comes from before, but now it is a very in a very special way, very very hard. Uh, roots and uh, we have to fight against that and to uh, think that is the only thing that could save humanity that's why I wanted to I was very worried about that I'm see I, I, I'm I'm watching this like uh, like uh, this topic that we are entering into a place a very difficult place and we have to be together to to uh, to defend And, and and to be able to share programs and to share topics and to share um, uh, things and commission uh, plays and commission uh, a lot of things and and and, and that's it. Um, in Spain, for example, we, we've been always very friendly. We have uh, been inviting a lot of people from Europe and it is, it's, it's been quite difficult to go out of, of Spain because of an economic uh, situation a lot of times um, uh, coming from the, the idea of culture that our politicians have always had. And so it has been a bit difficult. And um, we have been inviting a lot of people, but we have never shared really what we thought we had. I think that, for example, now, while I was... Uh, During my, my tenure in, in Teatro Español, I've seen that there were a lot of dramaturgs, women and men, great ones, um, making like a kind of gold age in the dramaturgy. That's why I, I started having this relationship with Angola, uh, 
to share a program with our drama, uh, new dramaturgy and sharing it and 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 bringing it out of of our countries and with uh, Mikhail too, which uh, who I have a lot of, of uh, relation, very very tight one, and we are speaking a lot of times too because of, because we feel the necessity, the need of being together. Um, we did a lot of activities uh, with that, and it was the first time maybe that three like Español in in Spain was um, into the European uh, programs, and it was a very very special situation. Uh, uh, and we tried to do it by sharing a lot of things. Like for example, we came with uh, the IPAL, this great uh, project. Uh, that Angola created with with the uh, with the uh, young performing art lovers, which are uh, pub young public, who's going uh, who are going uh, all over Europe uh, to see things and to share and to and to and to think about that uh, about art and uh, have relationship with with the artists in another way, in a new way of having these relationships. Uh, mm, I think that uh, what we have seen those days with the coronavirus in Europe has been quite disappointing, really. It has been uh, very hard to see how they would, they didn't want to share anything, they didn't want to be together. There was not a Europe as we thought it was, and I think it's very important. I think from theatre, from culture, from our defence of culture, we can do a lot of things about that because um, we this is the the Europe of the values that we believe in. Uh, we have to be together with this project in in uh, with between lands with uh, dramatur dramaturgies, especially uh, with with all of us together with Valladolid, which is the, the theater that has uh, taken now all this project, and and I think we can do. Um, we we should be together uh, discussing topics, uh, discussing things that we think are important for society. And as Mikhail uh, said at the beginning, I think that that theater is an is a place of encounter to to uh, and and for example in Espanol we did it uh, to 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 take people to 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 be with them and to satisfy the reflections and the necessities of, of the audiences. And I think that uh, Europe is the way we, we have to do that. We have a lot of common history. Uh, most of us, mo most of us uh, have been living through uh, dictatorships and we are now in democracy and we have to uh, to be strong together and, and to be together to defend culture uh, in front of this um, difficult world that is coming and it was coming before coronavirus. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all. And now uh, the second question, that, which is closely related to the events um, of these days. How is the current emergency situation being experienced in your country? And how are you facing it in the theatrical context in relation to the different communities involved, from the artists uh, to the workers to spectators and citizens? Uh, Nuno Cardoso. Well, um, the, the situation in Portugal, uh, we're trying to face it uh, rationally i think and trying to bring people together with some with better better solutions but the the emergence of uh, the covid epidemic exposed a lot of fractures that are beneath um what was thought to be normal and and some of them the theater has to deal with them so this answer has lots of layers. Um, for one, uh, when the theaters had to close and the touring stopped, uh, it became evident that beneath all of it, 
it's also a question of economy and market. So budgets crumbled, uh, people began to, to be without work, um, lots of institutions uh, went into layoff and became uh, fragile. So this pointed out uh, a structural flaw in the way we organize things because it's true that it's a market, but there should be um, a way of protecting culture, of protecting the artists. Uh, but we hadn't thought about it because everybody was exchanging and co-producing and, uh, and then it stopped. So this led us to uh, a very deep reflection on, on how to cope with it. Um, as a theater, the first thing that we tried to do is to assure the people that are working with us that somehow, uh, at some level, uh, they wouldn't lose either their economic uh, welfare uh, nor the opportunity to show their work. And that as a, was a, a movement that was shared with all the theaters from Portugal that have different situations. And, but we talk a lot how to, to solve that. And then we had uh, the question of our workers. Uh, how to uh, continue uh, to to be an institution that summons people to get together and to discuss issues together, uh, working uh, apart uh, through a computer screen. Um, and that led us also to our city, to the people that come into our theatres. So, in a sense, we're trying to, at the same time, mend what we thought that uh, was uh, a flaw in the system before, and at the same time, uh, discover new ways to be present in, uh, in the lives of the people that came to the theater, in the lives of our workers, in the lives of the city and this led us to uh, think about uh, what means what it means to have a digital space to have a digital st stage to have a digital connection with people and how that can be a danger because uh, that doesn't uh, substitute the the live performance uh it's not the same thing uh so we should reinvent ourselves as programmers as workers as artists for that kind of niche um uh work that's that was the work that was still possible um so it's it's been um between these two two components how to be present how to be useful even if it's not useful in in the in our society every day and um, and again how to mend uh, our way of thinking our structure so that uh, people uh, uh, can be reassured that this won't happen again or if it happens again we'll we'll respond to it not with a surprise but with a plan um and so this affects us deeply in 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 the way we're thinking how our moving forward in the way the theater as an institution, as an open house, as a, as a, as a performance space, but also as a, a place of work, should uh, insert itself 
on the day-to-day -day life of of the city how should it discuss its issue issues how to protect its workers its citizens and its artists is it through closing itself no is it opening even though it's not re uh, almost not common sense but we reach that conclusion the more open we are the more we discuss the more uh, the less fragile we are so it's but it's also a murky uh, situation it's it's a thing that affects us all from the small things like buying bread to the big things that the state of the economy the state of the culture the state of uh, of communications and so it's um it's been a process all along uh, and in this process it's it's also a way to relook at europe for example to relook uh, at the world at the small things and that gives us uh, another way to look at the issues another way to look at the text saint jean is a repertoire theater so um so it's uh i hope i answered your question thank you very much uh, michael de Kock. hey hello can you could you repeat the question just to, to have it uh, yes for mind? sure it's very simple and very hard it's a, a kind of a how is uh, the um, current emergency situation being experienced uh, in your country and in your theater. So uh, uh, there are a lot of levels uh, for answering uh, from a personal level to uh, the working situation and so on. Yeah, well, on a personal level, let's start there. Uh, I'm writing and I'm, I'm very privileged, like so many others, who have, uh, who have uh, like the people we're talking with now, I mean, who, who have the opportunity, although it's, uh, it's a challenge and a big job, but to run a theater, but we're in a way we're privileged. There are a lot of artists now who see months and months of work go down the drain, who have a much harder time. So I think um, it's good to open with that. Um, I, uh, Nuno said a lot of very, very interesting things. I also think that it's a moment we have to, but to rethink some stuff. Um, and to evaluate how we've been doing. I mean, there has been a lot of international uh, co-producing. It's been like a kind of a rat race. Some uh, choreographers, artists, they, for a bowl of soup, they, ha they do a residency for a week, um, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, without being paid enough and without being supported enough. So I think all that system, the, the two coming up, the two upcoming years will crash. To not well, not totally. But it will really have uh, need a reboot, and it will crash. I think. Um, well, I, 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 I'm not uh, predicting the future. Nobody can. But I think the whole next season will will um, have uh, COVID will have a big, big impact on creation, production, but also on how presenting to audiences. So I think, though, by the way, uh, that uh, um, um, networks as between lands are not the same as the the fast co-producing networks where, where theaters just give some money or buy a performance. Because this network, and the proof is that you invited us to talk about these kind of matters, is a network which is based on um, confidence and which is based on um, um, interaction and uh, on thinking and not about big money and big spending. So it's not about me buying buying my place to have a, a um, you know, to, to be on this or that festival. So that, there will be a big change in the international market. That's my first thing. Um, for culture, I think we should claim our space because, of course, everybody has to restart the economy again and all governments are doing that also in Belgium. We already had some cuts just before um, we went into this COVID nightmare or opportunity. I mean, it's a nightmare for a lot, of, a lot of people, but it's also a way, like we've been saying, of rethinking what we're doing. Um, so, um, well... Lots of people have been losing their jobs or their perspective. So what we try to do, because um, 
I run a, a big house in Brussels. We really, really, really try to reinvest in artists starting from now and starting from September, which means that we rescheduled uh, September, October, <clears throat> and that we're doing things outside, but also inside, that we're doing four open calls for a, for a solo performance, and it will pay those artists a month's salary. Um, that I'm really, really, I'm talking to all the artists uh, from Pipping Tom to Ultima Vest to everybody, everybody who comes in autumn to KVS, we're doing this now up to December. I really, really ask them to consider if showing a performance for a venue with 15% of seats taken is worth doing because it will kill the theater. Theater, um, as a start, as a premise, actually is a gathered being together is really the opposite of social distancing it's a gathering it's we what we do is gather uh too too close to one another to to live something together so do like big shows even if we could can do it in september because we even don't know yet but i think maybe we will but there's the testing etc in the quarantine but big shows for like venues with like 50 60 70 people people in it because you can only they made a study in holland you can have like 17 percent of the whole venue if you do the social distancing as it's needed so i really recommend many artists to rethink their work for a while and the other the other things they will come back very soon but to rethink what they're doing we will not present like 50 shows for uh, 10 percent of an audience or like 100 people where there should be 550 what we want to do though is make uh, artists work because we have money we are we are we have a theater we run a theater to to invest in artists and in culture so that's what we will do so starting from september people will start working we will show it um in the city in the venue in another uh, composition or with another relationship with the audience or if everything is closed the artist will go stand in front of a of a building and do it there i know uh, with you that this is not a solution for everything there are big orchestras there are big venues like ours the core business is not that i agree totally with that but i think that we really should do that now. Those theaters who can do it should do those kind of um, investments because otherwise I think that we might end up with not investing enough in artists and um, well, not spending the money uh, for what we have it. Um, so yeah, it's a way of reinventing space, reinventing time. We will like, I've been saying about, we will break out of the building in September, but we'll also do in the building with the light of the Servante, which is the light that never goes out in the theater. Um, um, we will do uh, 24 hours, one artist, five people uh, for 15 minutes, so that we have like in 24 hours, we have like the whole capacity of a whole venue. I mean, so we're doing stuff like that to reinvent, reinvent the space and the time. Um, but like I said, it has to be in different levels. So that's what we're uh, uh, as a theater also defending in the media and at the government. So yes, there has to be more support because uh, they're talking all the way all the time about airplanes and um, how they, we should uh, save banks and companies. But now more than ever, we also should should save uh, culture because we all know um, as well. Most of us know now also that when we were locked down, how much we need um books music everything how much we need artists and culture and i agree also with nuno um uh, theater is a gathered happening it's not about having the best zoom uh, presentation i think it's a little bit like um, i think the best uh, little movies you can make are made on tiktok you know uh, and it's not in theater that we should do such stuff i i'm not against streaming either but i think that we should find other ways of being of togetherness in the same building in different rooms um, as long as we not can do it in the way uh, we want it thank you very much angular c'est ça euh, alors en, en france euh, depuis la, la fermeture des, des théâtres euh, qui a eu lieu le, le 16 mars euh, la situation a généré euh, une très grande anxiété, d'abord sur un, sur un plan général, au niveau général, euh, les Français avaient sans doute le sentiment euh, de compter parmi euh, les toutes premières euh, puissances mondiales. 
ce qui les mettait dans leur esprit euh, relativement à, à l'abri. En tout cas, ça leur donnait sans doute un, un certain sentiment de sécurité. Euh, le réveil a été dur puisqu'ils se sont... Euh, ils ont réalisé que leur pays n'avait ni stock de masques et que l'état de leur santé publique était mauvaise. Et ils ont eu aussi un sentiment très, très, très terrible que les réponses données étaient en essentiellement bureaucratique, avec ce que ça peut avoir de pire et de pas humain. Au-delà de ces, de, de ces considérations générales, mais c'est important de les, de les repréciser parce que l'ensemble des annonces favorables qui ont eu lieu dans le domaine de la culture se sont inscrites vraiment dans un climat de, de défiance, euh, euh, d'anxiété, de, 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 de peur, euh, de défiance vis-à-vis -vis, euh, des gouvernements. Euh, la crise, comme le disait Nuno, est un profond révélateur euh, des dysfonctionnements, des inégalités et euh, on se rend compte au, au, aujourd'hui que euh, la, la banlieue française est, est réellement euh, au bord de l'insurrection. Euh, on commence à avoir des informations et, et, et ça aura évidemment des conséquences graves euh, à la fois sur l'avenir politique, mais aussi probablement euh, sur l'avenir de la création. Alors après, euh, voilà, pour les bonnes nouvelles, euh, c'est euh, que euh, la grande majorité des personnes qui travaillent euh, dans le domaine de la création euh, artistique et, et culturelle ressortent du régime de, de l'intermittence sur les 1,3 million de Français qui vivent de la culture. Il y en a seulement 500 000 qui le font dans le cadre d'emploi fixe. Et euh, l'annonce du président de la République que euh, les intermittents du spectacle pourraient avoir une année blanche et donc euh, conserver leur, leur assurance chômage euh, pendant encore euh, un an, ça a été euh, vraiment la très bonne nouvelle euh, qui va régler des, des situations euh, dramatiques euh, très, très vite. Euh, ceci dit, le, le président de la République euh, a dans le même temps euh, exhorté euh, les artistes à être inventifs et à aller dans les écoles, ce qui a aussi produit son corollaire d'agacement. Euh, pour ce qui concerne le théâtre, plus particulièrement, euh, la grande majorité des centres dramatiques nationaux et des théâtres nationaux reprendre les répétitions euh, début juin pour les créations euh, du mois de septembre. Mais euh, comme, comme partout, l'incertitude sur les conditions de présentation des œuvres reste à peu près totale. Euh, et donc, euh, les différentes scènes ont vraiment, de manière très fructueuse, ouvert le dialogue euh, comme euh, Michael, avec les, les artistes pour imaginer des, des solutions alternatives, que ce soit des petites formes, une autre, un autre type de présence dans la ville. Euh, en tout cas, tout ce qui est possible pour, pour adapter euh, la création euh, à ces futures conditions euh, qu'on qu ne connaît pas. Euh, certains théâtres ont euh, mis en place... Euh, ça me semble être une initiative très intéressante, des résidences de recherche euh, en attendant de, de pouvoir euh, repartir sur euh, les résidences euh, de création. Enfin, euh, en France, la, la grande majorité des théâtres publics ont honoré les contrats euh, vis-à-vis voilà, -vis des artistes qu'ils s'apprêtaient à, à présenter jusqu'à la rentrée. Donc, on payait les cachets, euh, 
voilà, plus euh, un certain nombre d'institutions comme le Festival d'Avignon est allé jusqu'à euh, rechercher les personnes qui avaient l'habitude d'employer et qui, eux, n'avaient pas de, de contrat. Je sais que beaucoup de théâtres euh, en, en Europe euh, voilà, ont, ont fait ça. Euh, de mon côté, j'étais un peu sceptique au début de, du confinement sur euh, l'utilisation tous azimuts euh, du web, euh, les journaux de confinement. Euh, et euh, petit à petit, euh, euh, en y intéressant, j'ai vraiment vu ce que euh, ce support euh, pouvait révéler de, de meilleur on l'espère parallèlement à la reprise de la présentation des spectacles en vrai, live. Et, et donc, j'y vois à nouveau un formidable outil de développement des idées et bien sûr des, des réseaux européens comme ceux que nous développons avec Between Mans, par exemple, ou avec Wi-Fi dont Carmé Portacelli parlait tout à l'heure. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Claudio Longhi. Alors, euh, pour ce qui concerne notre théâtre, euh, l'éclat de l'épidémie a été strictement lié à l'Europe. C'est-à-dire qu'à euh, la fin de février, quand nous avons commencé le lockdown du moins dans notre région, nous avons en cours le, le Festival Vie, qui est l'un des lieux de relation de notre théâtre avec l'Europe. Et ce, cette édition du festival était dédiée à l'Europe. On venait de jouer Architecture, la pièce de Pascal Rimbert dédiée à l'Europe. Donc il y a une sorte de relation intime chez nous entre la, la maladie et, et l'Europe d'une certaine façon. Et je crois qu'il faut même réfléchir sur une autre petite question avant de répondre, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a une très forte relation entre le, le Covid et le théâtre, c'est-à-dire que euh, le souffle, c'est le lieu du comptage, et en même temps c'est le lieu où euh, on va bâtir l'expérience théâtrale. Euh, soit pour, ses, pour le, les comédiens qui jouent, mais même euh, pour les danseurs, même pour les musiciens, le souffle est fondamental. Donc, il y a une étroite relation entre euh, le spectacle vivant et la, et la maladie. Et le, la dernière euh, euh, réflexion préliminaire, c'est que, euh, du moins si je réfléchis sur euh, la situation italienne, euh, le Covid, d'une certaine façon, a montré la fragilité d'un système, c'est-à-dire qu'il y avait des problèmes même avant, mais euh, le Covid rend plus évident ce problème-là. Avant tout, le problème de la fonction du théâtre à l'intérieur de la société et après le problème euh, de, de la condition des travailleurs du spectacle, les artistes, euh, même... Euh, des euh, collègues qui m'ont précédé ont parlé du problème des artistes à l'intérieur de, de l'épidémie. Alors, pour ce qui concerne la, la, la situation actuelle, euh, c'est la nouvelle de ce jour-ci. En Italie, on peut reprendre l'activité théâtrale à la présence du public à partir de la moitié de juin, du 15 juin. Et on peut recommencer les activités, ça dépend des régions, même à l'intérieur des théâtres, sans ouvrir au public euh, au mois de mai. Pour nous, euh, le 18 mai, c'était la date à partir de laquelle on pouvait commencer à travailler en répétition. Euh, je crois qu'il y a de, euh, des objectifs différents euh, qu'on doit tenir ensemble au moment où euh, on réfléchit sur la programmation, sur les activités, c'est-à-dire euh, d'un certain côté, euh, nous avons une très grande envie de reprendre l'activité, de réétablir la relation avec le public, mais en même temps, nous, nous devons nous faire charge euh, de, de la nécessité de garantir la sûreté, la santé, 
et l'économie, parce que nous avons même la responsabilité du bilan. Et il y a une question même juridique au point de vue de responsabilité par rapport à la diffusion de la maladie. Donc, euh, d'un côté, on voudrait euh, recommencer très vite, mais de l'autre côté, il faut être prudent. Euh, dans la question, on posait la, euh, le problème de la relation avec les, les différents interlocuteurs euh, de la communauté théâtrale. Alors, il y a le problème de la relation avec le public et comme il y a une difficulté à penser la pratique théâtrale, je crois que c'est nécessaire maintenant garder du moins le niveau de la pensée théâtrale, c'est-à-dire de pouvoir parler du théâtre et de réfléchir sur le théâtre. C'est ce que nous sommes en train de faire à ce moment-là. De l'autre côté, il y a le problème euh, du soutien aux artistes parce que c'est là vraiment notre fragilité, surtout en Italie, comme nous n'avons pas un système législatif très fort par rapport à la, euh, aux garanties euh, pour, euh, pour les artistes. Bien sûr, comme euh, on vient de dire, pour l'avenir, il y a des problèmes énormes au point de vue de la construction des relations avec les autres théâtres, avec l'horizon européen dont nous parlons. Et c'est une question énorme euh, au point de vue euh, de, de moyens de production. Euh, mais euh, surtout, je crois euh, que le, le Covid nous pose une question de quel genre de reconstruction nous avons euh, en tête, de euh, quels sont nos objectifs, c'est-à-dire que je crois que nous n'avons pas devant nous un, un, euh, une future de boom économique, euh, nous avons devant nous un futur de, qui doit se poser la question euh, de, du, de la possibilité euh, de trouver un équilibre entre euh, le développement et le respect de, de la terre, le, le, le respect de la communauté. Donc, il y a des problèmes énormes qui sont posés pour le Covid et nous devons réfléchir ensemble sur ce problème. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. And, uh, and then Carmen Portacelli. I, I, I hope not to lose you again because it's all the time uh, cutting out. Okay. Well, as I'm not running any theater now, I have not had the possibility of acting or um, reacting uh, at uh, the coronavirus and all these crises we are living. What I can say is that the situation caused by COVID you know, has been very hard in Spain, as in Italy, as you know. Our main sources of wealth have always been tourism, museums, beaches, food, life in the street, a lot of services. Um, and most of those sources have been completely locked down in this moment. Uh, people have been quite disciplined, really. We have listened to our government. All the theatres have been locked, uh, in, uh, obviously closed. Uh, all the plays we were uh, rehearsing and uh, all the plans we had have been cancelled. Um, suddenly, we nobody expected it, really. It was we, we knew it was uh, something that was happening, uh, was a bit difficult and could be uh, modifying a bit what we were living, but not as this as it happened. And so this, we were not ready really to react. Uh, to what was happening, really. Um, I see theatres trying to be alive during this very long confinement. As La Badia, for example, in Madrid. La Badia, uh, that Nuno knows quite well, which is a, a quite interesting theatre. Uh, uh, they have been keeping a kind of programme for the situation with conversations between artists. I think it's a good thing, as Claudio uh comes to say because i think we have to talk about theater we i think we all agree that we have to talk about that we have to be ready for another time like this one that maybe will come soon or not but uh we have to be ready because it was very unexpected really so they were 
having conversations between artists um, between, about theatre, about what to do in this situation. Uh, I think there were uh, there were allowed for up, up for up to forty people, something uh, like this, were were allowed to to be talking and to take to take part of this virtual conversation, and they were um, uh, making questions, and it was quite interesting. And the same, at the same time, they were they were doing readings and a kind of virtual direct theater that people paid to be able to see in streaming and so it was quite interesting what they did. Uh, Abadia was quite well in this. They, they reacted quite well and, and taking a lot of care of the situation and taking a lot of care of, of uh, giving a service to the public, to the audience. Which is the, the, the I, th I think is the it's mandatory in a in a in a public um, theater. Uh, in Teatro Libre, for example, in Barcelona, they had some uh, program called something like Libre in the so at the sofa or something like this, and they could um, they they were showing um, some of the most uh, recent successful plays that they had done and they had a lot of people in the streaming seeing it by the YouTube uh, the Teatro Libre YouTube and uh, they had done I think they have done some programs to to help the companies that were cancelled the the shows that they had to do in, in Teatro Libre so it, it's it's been uh, interesting for them and they will do it next year and they are helped now with the money, etc. Uh, but as Anne has said, Anguala, the feeling is terrible and people is very dis disparate. Really, we don't have work. Most of people don't have work. Um, uh, most of people is not paid, are not paid. And so it's a very uh, disparate situation. Uh, our government has done a lot of help, helps for, for companies as in France and uh, everywhere, but it is not enough in the meaning that we work because we love to work and because we, we feel alive working. And now we can be together. Uh, and as, as uh, Mikhail said, uh, we have we we the theatre is a meeting of people. It's not it's it, it's nothing to do with being separated with meters of distance with being few people. Or I mean that is true that it will bring about inventions to go on and to be alive. But the most interesting, and I wanted to explain it to you because it has been quite interesting, is what a Greek festival has uh, has done in this situation. They could, they were mm, hesitating uh, about doing the the festival or not because of the people that could go uh, that were that were allowed to go there. For example, I think it's one thousand eight hundred people in 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 the amphitheater, and I think it will be only eight hundred people. But he will go on with this festival, and he he will call it from Greek from Greek festival to Greek festival. It means that he will do a lot of things for the audience and a lot of things for all these companies that have lost the possibility and have been cancelled cancelled um, all the plays and all the shows that he, that, that they had to do. And um, for example, it's like a supportive matter, a solidarity uh, matter with people. And for example, I'm going to do like a kind of two nights in, in Greek festival with 22 or 24 actors and actresses who have been, who have been canceled in the normal festival. And we are going to offer this to the public and is a very uh, special night in, in, in Greek festival to go on with the festival to give work to these actors and actresses and, and technicians and everybody who has, who has lost the work. What um, in museums, in outside, as Mikhail was explaining before, and um, and with conversations with people about what is going on and what will we do in this situation if it, it it's coming again. I hope not, but maybe it's coming again. What is, what is very clear for us, talking about Europe, is that we still have to be together. We must go on. 
we we can't close theater as as it is a public service we must offer activities conversations we have to share questions with the audience and we must be ready for the immediate immediate future and workers should be involved in the new inventions to offer culture to the seat to the citizens and this is our duty really and, and the thing we have to do thank you very much carmen thank you all and the last question looking uh, at the potential mission of a european theater what kind of developments do you imagine hereafter not only from the artistic productive point of views, but also in relation to the needs of the society in which we live. I call on uh, Nuno Cardoso. Well, that's a big question. Um, well, I don't think that uh, COVID um, is a beginning of another thing. COVID is like an accelerant. Uh, it stopped us and made us think. But for me, um, the issues are the same. We're talking about togetherness. And actually, I don't feel any togetherness in Europe right now. Uh, so... The issues for, for me are still what is democracy, uh, how do you discuss poverty, how do you discuss migration, how do you discuss loneliness, how do you discuss education, gender, um, how are things right now uh, concerning us as human beings? And I think that What's amazing about um, the Greek tragedies uh, and what I rediscovered now because our ensemble, because we couldn't work, we're doing Zooms and opening up to people, but we did Antigona in stop motion for kids, uh, a web series. And, and we actually talked about, uh, about the text and about how, what we should do. And, most of our discussions came to 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 the simple understanding that uh, it speaks about humanity, and I think that the central issue, uh, the foundation of Europe, of modern Europe, of post World War II Europe, is about humanity. About and humanity is all genders. It's uh, all people. And we've lost way in that. So how to figure that out in a social environment that's already half virtual? How to, to work that out in a globalization where, you know, one of the great measures of equality is transmission of knowledge and globalization is not going to transmit knowledge not the way it's going right now and you have the issue of the vaccine if someone discovers the vaccine how will it be available to everybody it's shared knowledge that's one of the main things that makes us humans and that's one of the main things that makes theater, theater. It's shared knowledge. Uh, it, it was always so. And it has, it's this kind of miracle where people uh, come together and for that briefest of time, uh, actually uh, live in another world. Uh, they forget the way the, the bourgeois theater is uh, made. They, they forget all of that. And they just think about that when, when we have that miracle. So that's, that's the main issue for me. Uh, 
And that's the issue that I carry when I discuss uh, budgets or when I discuss programming with a political uh, person, but also with an artist that maybe is so wrapped up in this small thing that he, he forgets about this great issue that's uh, being human. So maybe I'm a bit lyricist or... Uh, as my my colleagues say, old fashioned, but but I do think that that's the main issue, and what um, COVID and these epidemics showed us is that uh, we could have been more prepared if we were more awakened. So I think that the theater. The theater that has to spring up, it has to find new ways, it has to touch n new new spaces, new new audiences, new ways of doing things. But that's been our bread and butter for the last 2,000 years. We're just working around how to reach people. But what I cannot dismiss and I cannot forget is that our... For me, as an artistic director, and I suspect I won't be for long, um, the issue is humanity. I cannot abide what's happening in Hungary. I cannot abide with what's happened with the migrations. I cannot abide with what's happening in my neighborhood when the rich have all the things and the poor just come and go on buses. So. And how do you structure that? How do you find a speech for this day and age to remember that that's what we are? People. Uh, that's, uh, I cannot abide Trump. I'm sorry. I had to say the name. Um, and in, in the whole... Uh, I'm really worried that this great experiment that is Europe, that gave uh, a border country like Portugal an opportunity to grow, is being undermined by uh, nationalist speeches, by uh, economical speeches, 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 and by lots and lots of prejudice. That's not the, the origin of the project. And that's not the origin of theater. So, uh, that's what I think about. And that's what I think that the mission for uh, European theater, for any theater, should be just uh, stiff up the lip, uh, stiff up her lip, and talk about issues, talk about people, saying that we're no more, no less than than people. That's it. Thank you very much, Michael de Kock. Nothing. The microphone. Okay. Yes, here I am. Now you hear me, right? Well, Nuno, thank you for those beautiful words. Uh, let them call you old-fashioned if they want to. I wouldn't bother if that's uh, the message. I was really touched by your words. Um, and of course, I agree with many of them. Um, it's interesting to, to think about all those things. Um, I, 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 I often see in meetings uh, like these, not in this meeting, but I mean in many Zoom meetings, that you go for first 30 minutes around the same circle saying yes but maybe then this will happen maybe then that will happen and sometimes i stop it and i say okay i have this talk in every meeting so can we please uh, move on and try to be concrete about how we can give answers to this to what's happening um so i don't have uh, i cannot either predict the future and i think it's also very dangerous to try so um, but you can, we can imagine a future, and I think theater um, is a good place to imagine a possible future, or to to have options open for a future. I'm not saying um, 
because I don't know, I repeat, that COVID is a game changer. Um, but what is true, um, that is that it is in a way marking an era. We've been living, uh, Nuno's been talking about migration, um, human rights, etc. After the Second World War and the build-up of Europe and all the way up to, um, let's say, the invention of Internet uh, beginning last decade of the 20th century, and uh, the borders opened not only in Europe but like globally, uh, all, and and the neoliberalism, um, well, neo or without neo, I don't care. But um, the free market um, being global, like for ages and ages, it has taken us somewhere to the limits of climate. I'm not saying that the virus is a. It is not a, a sign from wh whoever, but it is it the consequence of a. Of a world uh, in global, of an over globalized world, who is totally, totally um, depending on um, economic exchange. Um, lots of uh, people are also panicking now. Also, there, I cannot predict whether it will be like a V crisis and we will go up again. But I, I'm, um, uh, that's 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 hard questions. But I think, in a way, the fact that we are confront the conf the, the the really harsh confrontation now with all the world uh, put to a stop is really like a unique moment in history. Well, you have them like every 50 years or, or every 100 years, but it's really amazing that um, nobody could do what's now been happening, with what is happening now. And in a way, this is the first global crisis of the 21st century. So for me, in a way, it's like the beginning of the century. Um, of course, we had the crisis of the banks, we had the crisis of the, the climate with all the manifestations, we had the, the protests in, in, in many, many countries. We have the totalitarian, the totalitarian regimes going up, the populism going up, up to now, actually. So now we have this strange moment where we go to, um, well, to into pause and everybody has to respect that. It's, so for that reason, it's a, for many, in many ways, it's a very, very... Um, um, well, it, it might be a paradigm shift, but of course, many, many forces in economy, in politics want to take us back to business as usual the day after tomorrow or even today, if they could. I think you have them in every country, also in Belgium, you have people saying, well, nothing happened, let's go back to work and keep the sick people at home. So there's all this logic of a system that wants to maintain itself. I think also the cultural world should, should do some... Uh, look into some mirrors uh, about uh, concerning that matter because I think there's you know there's there's well there's this this for me the the Champions League of theater and the big festivals is not the Europe I'm thinking about as being an interesting way of working together in Europe I have nothing against big festivals um, they're fun but I mean it's not like this big marketplace where all these plays are you know where you go shop for plays I think it's not about that I think it's about well, reinventing in another way or rethinking in another way humanity and human uh, exchange or uh, uh, cultural um, dialogue um, and humanity, I'm using the word because Nuno used it in such a beautiful um, um, way. Um, and to conclude, I want to say that, um, well, uh, and also referring to what Claudio was saying, uh, theater is about breathing and we've been taken, our breath has been taken away and we have to protect uh, us from breathing from other people so which is it's very strange but I think there will always be stories um, stories to be told together a past it's these stories that make humanity every scientific theory and, and um, uh, vaccine um, has to be reinvented um, because the virus changes and everything changes stories also change but they also stay the same in a way that they connect people so there will always be storytelling, there always be, there will be the need of people coming together for their storytelling. It's not only a way to um, collect the past and to pass knowledge, as um, um, Nuno was saying, but it's also a way to dream or to reinvent uh, a common future, I think. Thank you very much. Angolar? Merci, euh, Michael, pour ces phrases de fin qui, qui résonnent vraiment euh, très fort chez moi. Réinventer euh, ensemble un futur. Euh, bon, moi, je voudrais partager euh, d'abord quelques craintes. Euh, la, la crise a déjà eu un impact euh, 
énorme sur euh, la production, la présentation des œuvres, euh, la diffusion. On sait que les spectacles qui n'auront pas été vus euh, ne pourront pas tourner. Euh, donc la situation euh, de la circulation, euh, de la diffusion des artistes euh, est maintenant vraiment complexe. Euh, et euh, pour autant, euh, j ai, j ai, je crains euh, que euh, la circulation des artistes internationaux soit une sorte de euh, dégât euh, collatéral et durable. Euh, donc, j'ai vraiment peur que cette circulation soit euh, stoppée, remise en question euh, de manière globale et pas simplement... Euh, juste la remise en question euh, du marché euh, dont, dont parlait Michael. Donc, euh, j'ai l'impression que nous devons nous unir pour euh, défendre le sens euh, de la présence des artistes étrangers sur nos scènes et dans nos saisons. Euh, moi, <rire> pour jouer à me faire peur, j'essaye je, d'imaginer euh, ce que serait le, le théâtre français s'il n'y avait pas eu euh, des artistes comme euh, Peter Brook, euh, Klaus Michael Gruber, Christian Moupa, enfin je veux dire, euh, donc le, le, le ralentissement ou, ou l'arrêt de la circulation euh, des artistes aujourd'hui et de leur révélation sur les scènes, sur nos scènes nationales, ça me fait peur. Euh, J'ai vraiment peur que... Voilà, qu'il qui faille la défendre euh, pour, pour se convaincre de, de, de ce que serait la situation s'il euh, y avait vraiment un, un ralentissement. Je crois qu'on n'a qu'à regarder euh, ce qui se passe dans les, dans les pays ou les régions dans lesquelles il n'y a, a pas d'échange artistique. Euh, C'est triste de voir un théâtre se replier sur, sur ses acquis, je crois. Euh, mais euh, parce que le frottement euh, et les échanges sont le cœur de, de la création euh, et, et, et c'est bien d'en de, avoir conscience mais pour autant je pense que c'est important entre nous euh, de réfléchir à une nouvelle écologie des échanges artistiques j'ai l'impression qu'il va falloir quand même euh, interroger un certain nombre de choses et, et défendre euh, voilà, et, et modifier les conditions de circulation euh, des artistes et, et parfois les nôtres, parce qu'on ne circule pas trop, euh, souvent euh, sans le vouloir ou, ou en ayant conscience dans certains cas terribles, euh, on, on fait passer des artistes d'un bout à l'autre de l'Europe pour, pour deux représentations. Euh, je crois qu'il faudrait euh, interroger la manière dont on construit nos, nos programmations, ou en tout cas euh, rendre cette construction euh, plus transparente. Euh, je dirais qu'il faut questionner vraiment sérieusement la course à l'exclusivité de certains euh, gros événements impose euh, aux artistes euh, l'exclusivité, euh, l'absence de communication sur leur euh, travail de création. Ça me paraît des, des pratiques qu'il faut euh, remettre en, en cause. Euh, enfin, j'ai l'impression que, que la présence des artistes internationaux doit mieux profiter au, au local. Euh, nous devons, comme, comme pour b 2 inviter inventer des projets qui nous permettent de mieux articuler euh, la présence des artistes internationaux avec la formation euh, et, et la recherche. Euh, Nuno, disait, disait, Nuno disait que le partage de la connaissance, c'était important, je crois, oui. Euh, il faut euh, remettre ça euh, dans nos projets. Euh, et, et il faut mieux connecter la présence des artistes internationaux avec la vie démocratique et le débat d'idées. On fait tous ça déjà, mais je crois que c'est important de, de poser les choses pour mieux y réfléchir. Euh, 
remettre euh, la circulation des artistes dans euh, une réflexion sur le sens, je crois, aboutirait à privilégier les temps longs, euh, à offrir plus de temps aux artistes, ça me semble important. Euh, je me demande si on ne devrait pas réfléchir à une charte euh, des échanges internationaux, euh, peut-être contacter d'autres artistes et, et partager euh, ensemble leurs leur réactions. Euh, il nous appartient euh, de construire euh, un avenir viable, humain, avec les artistes. Et je crois que ça ne peut pas passer par un repli sur soi. Merci beaucoup. La colonne Claudio Longhi. Je suis euh, tout à fait d'accord avec euh, Nuno, mais même avec euh, Anne et Michael. Je veux dire que euh, le, le Covid nous a appris le, euh, le, la vraie signification de l'expression « village global ». Euh, maintenant, nous, nous savons bien, et nous, avons, nous ne le savons pas simplement, nous avons fait l'expérience que si quelqu'un tombe malade en Chine, il y a des conséquences chez nous ou en Amérique. Euh, mais en même temps, le Covid nous a appris qu'il y a une très grande différence euh, parmi les, les différents coins du monde, c'est-à-dire que il y a une différence si l'on tombe malade en Chine, si l'on tombe malade en Europe ou si l'on tombe malade aux États-Unis. Et je crois en effet que euh, l'essence, du moins euh, l'une des essences de l'Europe, c'est la, la réflexion euh, culturelle autour de la notion de, de droit de l'homme l'humanité dont nous nous a parlé. Euh, nous avons commencé le projet euh, qui va se conclure aujourd'hui en lisant la carte des droits de l'homme de l'Europe. Et c'est une, euh, une conquête énorme au point de vue de la civilisation. Donc l'Europe a des responsabilités énormes face au village global euh, pour soutenir le, le, le droit de l'homme. En même temps, nous savons, nous savons bien que cette épidémie euh, représente un passage fondamental pour l'histoire de l'Europe. Euh, L'Europe a, a montré en même temps sa force et sa faiblesse euh, pendant le, le mois du, euh, de la maladie, du comptage. Et je crois que l'Europe a des responsabilités et que nous avons des responsabilités, des responsabilités parce que nous sommes l'Europe. Et donc, nous avons la responsabilité d'agir pour soutenir ce modèle de civilisation. Je parlais de responsabilité, je crois que le théâtre a une énorme responsabilité parce que, comme je disais dans ma première réponse, le théâtre a contribué énormément à construire l'identité culturelle, donc l'identité politique de l'Europe. Et je crois qu'il faut euh, continuer euh, dans cette direction et le théâtre doit se prendre en charge euh, la, la, de la destinée de, du futur de, de l'Europe. Il faut en même temps réfléchir, comme Anne nous a rappelé, euh, sur le problème euh, du futur euh, et d'un futur soutenable. Voilà la nécessité de réfléchir sur l'écologie euh, de la production euh, et sur l'écologie de la production internationale. Et dans certaines façons, le projet Between Lands donne une petite contribution euh, sur le, le chemin de cette réflexion, parce que nous sommes ici, nous sommes en train de réfléchir, on a construit un projet qui ne bouge pas, qui n'a ne, qui ne, qui pas comme objectif euh, détourné, mais en même temps qui garde 
la relation avec les artistes. Donc, je crois qu'il faut réfléchir sur cette possibilité de garder les dialogues dans un cadre euh, d'écologie de production. Merci beaucoup. Carmen Portacelli. Well, you all have said uh, great things, really, and, and, and I couldn't say anything else. Well, uh, as, Nuno say, as, as Nuno said, it's a matter of togetherness, of course. And yes, COVID-19, I have the impression that is not changing a lot of goals of our society. It's only accelerating it. And we have to be there to, to, to face it. Um, I don't have an answer really. I've been thinking about a lot of solutions, a lot of possibilities, and and none of them convinces me really because it's very difficult to think about another way of living through uh, as we did till now. But anyway, and of course we should be ready henceforth uh, for another situation like this one, as I said before. I don't know yet how to think about it, but it's also new and it has been so unexpected. Um, maybe we should be ready to broadcast all of our productions, thinking about a practical way, uh, in a practical way, um, uh, to broadcast all our productions or, or even our co-productions with uh, six cameras uh, as National Theatre does, to do in streaming sometimes the plays, which is, when I think about that, I think it's very practical and it should be great to have this solution. Um, during a pandemia, as we, we had now, but really to, to be able to offer quality in these things uh, to the audience, of course. But when I think about that, I immediately I think that it's against theater because theater has a humanity, a direct, situation, uh, um, uh, a, a, a direct thing, a direct relationship that we cannot uh, break. But maybe this could be being practical, uh, a possibility to do it with six cameras or, or, or more in a, in a, with a great quality to be able to offer it to the public. Maybe we should do something that could be great, thinking always in a practical way, Um, and could be broadcast several rehearsals in order to offer to the public, to the audience, the possibility to know, to, to see like a kind of making of, um, seeing where we have problems that, that they usually um, don't see when, when, when they come to a performance and they don't have to see it, of course, that maybe they could know Uh, how difficult it is a lot of times to to uh, solve a scene or to or to think about a character or or to discuss about if the character is like this or not and or behaves in this way or not and a lot of things like this. Maybe um, uh, we should commission new plays. This is a thing that I've been thinking of, uh, about a lot of times during this horrible time, uh, commission new plays, little ones, to be able to do them in spaces, in a very special ones, to be able to um, to have a number of uh, a number of public and, and not a lot of public, for example, and maybe we should start thinking in going out of our theaters to offer a new place to the public in another spaces, um, And in other neighborhoods, in libraries, in, in cultural centers, etc. But I don't know because, as I told you before, none of them uh, convinced me. But togetherness, yes, it is, of course. And 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 going on being uh, a, a human beings, humanity. Theater is about humanity. Theater is not about these topics about. Um, Uh, fiction in this way uh, it's about us it's the only thing we have really uh, as as Anne says we must think about uh, a, a, a possible future our possible future we must be together in that 
I wanted to tell you that, um, for example, three in the, during this week, and I think they started the, the um, last weekend in Spain. There are some people, not a lot, but enough of them, uh, and they are demonstrating a week ago against the, the the government. Our president Pedro Sanchez asking for his resignation. Uh, of course, they skip all security um, measures because they don't care about that. At the beginning, they were complaining because uh, gov uh, the Spanish government was late. Now they they break the security uh, distancing and so on because they, it is very important to be wrapped up with the Spanish flag and go out in the streets. They are few of them, but enough. They they hurt. I, the injury, you know, and uh, the, yesterday they went to Plaza de Santana, as you all know where it is, in front of Teatro Español, there is the Lorca statue, there is the Lorca statue there, and they wrapped Lorca in, um, up into the, uh, with this uh, Spanish flag, which is exactly the flag the, of those who killed him. It was really very painful for all of us because it's really um, I don't know how to say I don't know how to express it I don't I don't have words but that makes me think of what and what's not democracy we are the beginning again what and what's not democracy and then we have to talk through art about that. That's why we are together in this project and in another project that we have to be together. Um, as Michael said, we have to invent to create the future together. I think this is one of the things we have to learn of this conversation we've done. Um, we can't forget to be together. I think it's very important to be together, to plan common programs, as Anne said, to mix our artists, to, to, um, to think about uh, the subjects and 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 things that all the citizenhood is inter is interested in, as we are interested in, um, to play performances in all our languages. Brussels does it every day uh, uh, to mix people from our countries. Um, an avenir humain avec des artistes. Uh, and said, and I am absolutely, uh, I agree absolutely uh, uh, with that. Uh, this has always been our party of, between lands and, and of, of all of us that we are together in this uh, fight to defend culture uh, in front of anything that could come to start a new relationship far than the commercial one that we were found. Thank you very much, Carmen. We, um, at the end, we can return all together on air, on the video, for a final greetings. And, okay. Here we are. I can't see you. Ah, no. <laughs> okay. I would like uh, to thank Art Foundation uh, for organizing this talk. And uh, to thank you all, Nuno, Mikel, mm -hmm. and Claudio and Carmen, uh, for the thoughts you shared about the past, the present, and also the future of uh, the possible European horizons in contemporary theatre. For me, they have been an uh, important cause for reflection, and I hope it will be so. Also for those who will listen to the talk uh, online next week. So thank you very much. Thank you. All. Thank you a lot. It's a pleasure to share with you all those conversations. Ciao. Ciao.